Now let's take a look at summarizing some of the things that happen with mitochondrial dysfunction. What's going on in our mitochondria? We know that they are especially prone to DNA damage, and there's even a whole theory, the mitochondrial free radical theory, that suggests that the more uh, we consume and eat, the more cell respiration that goes on, and thus the more oxygen is split in order to form H2O, right, which generates, when we split the oxygen free radicals that can go around and do damage, and and the more uh, of that damage that's done, the more aged cells become. Now, there have been some challenges to this free radical theory or e expounding upon that th free radical theory. It really depends on how you look at it. But this is how I would summarize that information. So it turns out that uh, not only do we have the idea that, uh, yes, indeed, mitochondria do accumulate free radical damage throughout their lifetime, and that becomes more with aging, but is it uh, purely because of the increase in uh, free radicals or uh, oxidative, reactive oxygen species? So the question is, uh, do... Uh, these species actually cause our deterioration, or what else might be going on? So more recent evidence suggests that perhaps uh, the mitochondria in response to stress, right, if they're not functioning that well or if there's not enough energy around, we would upregulate the production of mitochondria such that there are many more mitochondria. And in, uh, as a consequence of that, the more mitochondria are producing more reactive oxygen species, or one-half O2s, that are able to go around and do more damage. But we are also increasing the energy output, so that might counteract that. Anyway, um, so we are, in, in, as, a, as a congruent thing, we are growing more mitochondria in each cell, and they are also producing more uh, reactive oxygen species. And so perhaps the increase in uh, reactive oxygen species, or ROS, is due to the fact that there are simply more mitochondria. Um, either way, the <laughs> reactive oxygen species are causing damage and are certainly aligned with uh, cellular aging. So just a little note on some of the newer research, um, but free radical theory is sort of the leading idea at the moment. Moving on to the next physiological trait of aging, you are probably very familiar with the idea of telomere attrition. Certainly, we have covered that uh, telomeres shorten as cells go through divisions, and stem cells and cancer cells might have uh, telomerase active, and so they can continue to grow uh, or regenerate telomeres. Uh, however, most somatic cells lose that capacity, and you're probably familiar with the Hayflick limit. Hayflick limit suggests that there are a limited number of cell divisions that somatic cells can go through before the telomeres become short enough to start doing damage to the, uh, I guess, sub-telomeric regions of the chromosome. Um, once the telomeres have essentially run out. It's suggested that uh, 50 divisions is about the maximum for any somatic cell. So after that, each cell division is shortening the ends of the chromosomes uh, till uh, we start actually nibbling away at the genes located on the ends of the chromosomes, which, as you can imagine, uh, can have some manifestations in the condition of the cell. So telomeric attrition, definitely associated with the aging cell. <music>